but I have to follow the facts. And when the facts change, I tend to change my mind. The facts changed on Tattoo Chef, and I changed my mind. It's Hello there, Lincoln here from BoaAcademy.org. Today let's talk about Tattoo Chef Inc. Before we get to it, let me just, let's just do a quick Google search for something just to get out of the way. Just real quick, I, I promise it will be very important, so just stick through this real quick, okay? So let's just go to Google and type in, can I gift my employees shares? And the first result that comes up is, you as the business owner can give or sell at a discount to the employees some portion of your personal stock in the company, enticing the individual with skin in the game, setting aside any shareholder agreement restrictions between you and other shareholders which may prohibit or restrict such transfers which should be considered and cleared. This sounds like a perfectly straightforward transaction. There are, however, tax matters to consider. That's it. That's the entire Google search and result. Now, why do we just do that Google search? Because I want to show you how easy it is to either verify or disprove information that you're given by people on the internet, say a YouTuber with 30 some thousand subscribers who just says something with no basis. So we just disproved a, what, 20 minute video by the popular investor on YouTube who said that Tattoo Chef and Sam Galletti might be engaging in some fraud against their shareholders and diluting them. And so he believes that the company is not worth investing in and he wants to protect his capital. Hey, that's fine. Go protect your capital however you want. My issue with it is that people on YouTube who have big subscriber bases have a responsibility to not share nonsense, to not share misinformation, to not just go on wild goose chases for the pure goal of making content and producing it. We've been here before, just a few weeks ago, we had to respond to another YouTuber who misread numbers on the legal documents filed by SoFi in the Securities and Exchange Report and made some very bad conclusions based on those wrong numbers. And then his subscribers took action that hurt their own financial interest because they believed the company was now bad because some YouTuber told them that their numbers were unimpressive. And so they went and sold off all their shares. And the same thing just happened again this week. One of my patrons at patreon.boacam.org asked me, hey, what do you think about this tattoo chef thing with this popular investor guy? And I went and watched his video. And I was open-minded as I always am because you want to be open-minded. And from the very start, all there was was speculation. Of course, he had published the, the original video and there was a huge backlash, so he deleted that video. So I was watching his second video where he was talking about how there was backlash and so he wanted to come out and uh, double down again on his speculation that was completely misled and misguided. So he did that and all of his subscribers in the comments were like, oh, don't worry about the haters. You just keep making great videos. Well, I agree with that sentiment. Do your best as a creator. It's hard to make videos. It's hard to put yourself out there. And you should try to avoid the hate and just keep, keep your head down and keep making great content. But if you're making content that people are having great backlash to, you might want to consider why they're, why they're so upset and why so many people are telling you you're wrong. And they're telling you great reasons and you're just ignoring them. So he takes a backlash and then doubles down on his speculation. And his speculation was completely wrong. It was completely unfounded. And his whole basis for it was on his failure to understand the legalities of employee compensation and gifting laws. He suggested that it's illegal or shady or defrauding of shareholders to gift shares to an employee. And then this one here, it says number two, 500,000 shares for free. What does this say? The reported disposition represents a bona fide gift made by Sam. So you could gift shares maybe to your parents. You could gift shares maybe to your daughter, to your maybe extended family, something like that. That would be quite normal. Let's see who he gifted the shares to. 
But this is what it says in the SEC filing. On April 15, Sam Galletti, our CEO, transferred 500,000 shares of common stock to Ellis Wasson, who was a partner at, whatever that firm is, counsel to the company. So, wait a second. He gave 500,000 shares to the attorney for the company. It's not a gift to his family. It's not a gift to his extended family, not his daughter, not his parents, to the attorney of the company. A gift. So in yesterday's update, I said, well, that could be seen as tax evasion. Maybe he's gifting shares to avoid paying tax. Or maybe it's bribery. Who knows? We don't know. He suggested that it, that was illegal. And we just did a Google search just now that that's proved it in less than 10 seconds. The first results tells you, you as the owner of a business, Sam Galetti of Tattoo Chef, can gift or sell at a discount your personal stock to employees as incentive or compensation. That's it. That's the whole video. I don't have to say anything else. That's it. He's completely wrong. It was completely unfounded. There's nothing else to say here. So he made that video and his shareholders or his uh, subscribers just ate it up. Just like with the SoFi guy who got SoFi wrong. But the SoFi guy, at least he didn't claim to know better than uh, the chief financial officer of a publicly traded company on how to file securities and exchange reports. This, the popular investor guy, I think his name is Paul or something, I'm, I'm not sure. He suggested that Tattoo Chef Inc. filed the wrong reports and he knew which one was better, which, which one made more sense and which one was right. Is this starting to throw up some red flags for you guys in terms of corporate governance? Gifting an attorney 500,000 shares? The problem that I had with the disclosures is a Form 4 is probably not what should have been issued. It should have been a Form 144. There was no filing for this. Zero. So there was a predetermined agreement here, as you can see from a private negotiated transaction, at $10 way below the share price, that in my view hasn't been correctly filed. He suggested that he, some grand guy on YouTube, who doesn't run a publicly traded company, who is not a chief executive of any company, some Joe Schmo, like myself, I'm just a Joe Schmo, I don't, I don't pretend to know more than any publicly traded company's executive. Sure, I can read the documents that they file and trust that they know what they're doing. I'm not going to suggest that I know better than them. So that's, that's what he did. And he was completely wrong. Let's talk about Chuck Cargill, the former CFO of Tattoo Chef Inc. Last year, June 2020, Tattoo Chef Inc. and Form Merger 2 agreed to do a merger, a SPAC merger, and take Tattoo Chef public. At the time, Tattoo Chef's CFO was Stephanie Dykeman, and she was also the COO. So Tattoo Chef going public realizes that, hey, we should get somebody who knows how to do this and has done it before to help us do this correctly, go public. So on August 24th, they hired Chuck Cargill, someone who has taken companies public before. He's well seasoned, over 30 years of experience. And they presumably say, hey, Chuck, take us public. We need your help to do this right. We make sure our financials are correct and make sure that we, once we get public, we're on the right track to continue to do well financially. So they bring on Chuck. And then in October 2020, the merger was complete. And I actually had a chance to interview Chuck Cargill. If you haven't seen that interview yet, go check it out. There was lots of gems shared by Chuck Cargill. So I had a chance to actually talk to this guy, understand how he thinks about finances and businesses and growing them. And he did the job that he was brought on to do. He took the company public and now the company actually increased their projections for how much revenue they're gonna make this year, 2022. So job well done, Chuck. But now Tattoo Chef doesn't need him anymore. So Sam says, hey Chuck, Thanks for doing what you came to do. I know that you were supposed to invest into some shares of the company later this year because that's our investment schedule. But since we're going to leave early, here are some shares to thank you for all the help that you've given us. And Sam Galetti did the same thing with some other employees. He said, hey, thank you for all of your help over the years. I really appreciate that you've helped the company get so far. Here are some shares I'm going to give to you or sell to you at a discounted rate so that I can just say thank you. We really appreciate all your hard work. And as we Googled earlier, and I saw the video, that's completely legal. Sam can give his shares to other employees. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. So now with Chuck Cargill gone as the CFO of Tattoo Chef Inc., Stephanie Dykeman takes back over her role as the CFO. And she also is the COO. 
She is tasked with making sure the company is operating well and developing their business, their many businesses. And she's perfectly fit to be the CFO, given her experience. And that's exactly what she was doing before they hired Chuck Cargo to help him go public. So I don't see any problems here with this timeline. Stephanie was CFO and COO before Chuck, before they chose to go public. Because Sam Galetti likes to make profit. He likes to keep cost low. And so he says, hey, if I can have one person doing two jobs, why not? I'll keep my CFO and COO in one role because it makes sense to have those two roles together. There aren't too many differences between what the CFO does and what the COO does. Of course, the CFO is doing more financial numbers and making sure all the, all the numbers are correct. And the COO is making sure the company is doing the right things to continue to operate well and grow into the future. There's a pretty good amount of overlap there. So why not have Stephanie do both of them again? So what am I talking about Pandora's box? Let's get straight into it. So this guy sees all this stuff, this popular investor guy sees all this stuff and he says, oh, I'm gonna go on this wild goose chase reading through these SEC filings and then suggesting that I know better and speculating that there, there's fraud here and there's just some illegal activity going on. And I'm gonna tell all these people on YouTube and that's fine, he can do that. It's not, he's a content creator, that's, that's exactly what he does. Again, we are just content creators, guys. I'm not, I'm not some financial guru or some uh, Wall Street analyst. All I'm doing is applying logic, doing research, and sharing my thoughts with all of you and how I invest. You shouldn't be listening to me as a financial advisor. But when people on YouTube do these things, they come out, they they share these these thoughts, and they share as if they know better than people who do this for a living, for their profession. And then their subscribers listen to them and sell their shares, or buy a thousand shares of the next hundred x penny stock and then they lose lots of money either they miss out on a great company or they get into some terrible company that is going to go up super fast and then just crash because there's only hype there there's no fundamentals to it but when you're investing we practice the bull mentality which is we know what we invest in we understand what we invest in we believe in what we invest in and we hold for the long term because that's how we build wealth in this country that's how we give ourselves the best chance of success on the stock market. So yeah, companies are very complicated. They're very hard to understand. So you shouldn't go be going out there trying to suggest that or act like you know better than the executives that are placed in their roles to lead the company. Warren Buffett has always said that his most important guidance is to find great companies with great managers and then get out of their way. Let them do what they've been doing because it's been working out pretty well for them, right? Tattoo Chef is a profitable company. They're a leader in their space. They have the facilities to do over $500 million in revenues. So this year they're planning to do 300 and they plan to do 1 billion by 2026. The management here is very good. Sam's a good leader. Sarah Galetti has some great vision for the product, for the brand. And Stephanie clearly knows how to run a company as a CEO, COO and the CFO. I'm not the COO. I'm not the CFO. I'm not going to pretend that I know which SEC filings, which SEC reports to file for certain situations. That's why they have an entire board to help them make the right choices. That's why they have a CFO to make the right, to make the right choice. That's why they have advisors to help them make sure that they're on the right track. And that's why they have auditors. To make sure they're doing the right thing and not and not defrauding themselves and shareholders. Companies are very complicated. So if you look in, into things you don't understand, you're gonna find many things that scare you. So yeah, look into it, try to understand it, but don't think that you know better. Because you most likely do not. And if you need some answers, if you need help understanding something, that's why we have investor relations. All you have to do is email the investor relation email. You can find it on the company's website. All you have to do is email them or call them and they will answer your questions. And they, do, and they cannot lie to you. It's a legal requirement that they tell you the truth because they cannot mislead shareholders. Of course, if there is material information that, they, that you're asking for and they haven't shared with the public yet, they can't share with you until they filed it with the SEC. But if you email Tattoo Chef's investor relations, 
It will answer your questions about these stocks being gifted to Chuck and others. I watched a lot of Criminal Minds as a kid. I really enjoy that show. Usually, the fraudsters don't do the fraud in public. They don't file the fraud in plain English with the SEC for everyone to read. The fraud part of, of the fraud is hidden in a lot of code. It's hidden in the minds of the fraudsters. They don't just say, hey, we're doing this fraud over here. Come look at it. Come look at us gifting shares to people illegally on the SEC report that's public to all shareholders and the SEC itself to look after. They're not doing that. The fraud is not happening in public, at least in most cases. Tattoo Chef is a sound company. Then they have good leaders and good management. So as Warren Buffett would say, just buy it and get out of the way. Invest and get out of the way. Let management do its thing. So last word is you have to understand that we're not playing with lottery chips here. Our companies are companies. We're investing in stocks, shares of actual companies. We're not, we're not buying crypto that has no underlying value and just hoping that it goes up. We're buying companies that make revenues. They sell products. And if the, if the products sell, maybe they do something right. If it doesn't sell, then maybe they suck. Maybe the company isn't good. Maybe you shouldn't be investing in it. But for Tattoo Chef, their products are flying off the shelves. They keep acquiring more shelf space at all the stores that they go to. Target wants more of their products. Walmart wants more. They're spending over it into Europe. They are increasing their projections, but not by insane amounts. I'm not saying we're going to make 10x more than we expected to make this year. They're saying, hey, we expected to make 200 and some million dollars, but we actually now think that we can do 300 million dollars. So there's not much reason here for you to listen to some guy on YouTube and make decisions based solely off his speculation and suggesting that he knows better than the executives that are running the company that we hired to do the job. If you listen to all the fear mongers out there who just make a bunch of content on scare people because that gets clicks and gets views, you're going to make some awful mistakes. You're going to miss out on lots of opportunities. Their job is to sell you fear because you're clicking on it, you're viewing it. So of course they're going to make that video and just speculate and send you on different goose chases and then try to tie all that together into some conclusion that a company is doing shady stuff and then suggest that because they're a SPAC it's, it's just in their nature. Well, Tattoo Chef isn't a SPAC. It's a company that went public through a SPAC. Just like the companies that go public through an IPO are not IPOs. They're companies that went public through an IPO. It's a vehicle. If you just take a second to just do a quick Google search, you will realize that this popular investor guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm, this is how I am. I am a very frank person. I'm not going to beat around the, bush, the bushes. People on, other people on YouTube might say, oh, well, I respect him and he's, a, he's just sharing his thoughts and opinions, but he's a good guy and whatnot. No, that's nonsense. He's sharing misinformation and leading people to make awful choices. Of course, making the choices is not his doing. People who follow him are making their own choices, but he's the one with the responsibility to not share misinformation and say that it's illegal to gift shares to employees. It's not illegal. A quick Google search will tell you that. So no, I don't, I don't respect what he's doing. Doesn't make sense. And if you want to follow him, go ahead. But know who you're following, know who you're listening to, and make your own choices. Stop blindly following these people on YouTube, even me, right? I'm just a guy, I'm just a software engineer who shares his thoughts on the internet. I'm not trying to be a cult leader. I don't like cults. So I suggest you don't be a cult follower. Not a good idea. That usually ends up very bad. So that's my thoughts on Tattoo Chef Inc. And this popular investor guy who I'm not sure why he calls himself. That's a very strange name, but hey, whatever. I just don't like what he's doing. And that's my thoughts. And obviously this video went longer than it had to. We could have stopped in the first 30 seconds after we read the result from Google on whether or not a business owner can give employees shares. We could have just done that and just stopped. We could have just emailed Investor Relations and just called it a day because they would have told us, told us the same thing. It's nothing special about what, what's ha what has happened here. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor. Like the video below, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and comment your thoughts. Let me know if you're following the popular investor guy and let me know if you disagree with me. Or let me know 
if you agree and that these people are doing bad things by sharing just speculation and fear. And as always, this video was made possible by our patrons at patreon.boacademy.org who support us financially and keep the channel going. So if you want to join us over there and help us keep going, keep making videos and sharing knowledge, then join us over at patreon.boacademy.org. You'll be able to engage our Discord channel where we share knowledge and discuss the stock market in real time every day by sharing news, rumors, and other investment ideas so that we can all do our own research and to come back together, collaborate, and make better investment decisions together. And you will have a chance at winning $200 every month just for being loyal and engaged patron. So if you're interested in all of that, hope to see you over at patreon.boacademy.org. I'm Lincoln with boacademy.org. Thank you again and have a great day.